Okay, my name is Kit. For those of you who don't know me, um, uh, welcome. It's your first time here in Victory Pasadena. Thank you for coming, and I hope this will be part of your regular Sunday schedule. Um, uh, could you please turn to the person beside you and say, I'm happy you're here today. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, again, uh, Farley, thank you for giving me that fan. I know it's a little bit warm, uh, but I think it's 10 degrees uh, cooler compared to last week. So, okay. So, welcome to Victory Pasadena. We are part of actually Victory SoCal, and Victory SoCal is part of. Uh, and hello, Lila. <laughs> uh, welcome. Part of. We also have another church in Victory San Diego. If you have friends or family who live in that area, you could also let them know that we have a church there. Say, say Victory San Diego. Uh, Victory San Diego, we, uh, you can, uh, we meet in the, every 10.30 a.m. So go, go check out our website. And of course, uh, we also have, we are part, Victory Soval is part of a global movement called Every Nation. All right, so that's what, that's what the video that you saw earlier, that's what it's about. And yes, thank you, first Gazette. Thank you, Gazette, for encouraging us with the Tights and Open message, and yes. Uh, you guys missed out, yes, but yes, I agree with the Z. Uh, there's more, okay, so there's actually a lot. There's a lot of things happening. Uh, I'd say uh, in a spiritual community, as we are going towards, gearing towards the end of our facility, as I know, uh, there's an announcement later, of course, uh, globally, uh, as a movement, there's so many things happening, church planting, campus missionaries, are being raised up, and of course, uh, world missions. Okay, so, and of course, today is actually for capping off our our Samson series. We are in our Faithful God series. So we appreciate our book study, Faithful God. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. Of course, um, every year we do a book study for us to understand uh, who only loves reading the word, who are so passionate about. When you wake up, Lord, this is, I want to hold this Bible. When you wake up in the morning, you open the Bible, the phone. First thing that you open in your phone is the Bible app. Come when you're like that. Oh, God, that's it. Or do you check your IG, your social, other social media sites? God is not uh, displeased with that. You know, I'm just asking. Okay? I'm just asking. Yeah. Or do you check your, do you go to your... I, I don't know. I, I go to my grocery app. That's what I every time. I love doing groceries. I, you, uh, there's a what's that? There's a icon that it's that's inside all the uh, apps that I have. It has all the groceries. Anyway, I'm going. I, I'm getting lost with the message. But yes, um, as I we are in our faithful God series, and every year we do a book study, and for us to understand so that. Um, what the what the word is about it's not just when you, there's like who among you uh, would love to read the word like you would understand it that right so of course uh, when you do a book study you go deeper to the word it's not just like oh you go to psalms who among you have uh, love the book of psalms book of proverbs mark yes shout out your favorite uh, book in the bible james huh john Hezekiah? Hesitations? <laughs> yes, yes. I see Ray raising up his hand. Ah, no, no, no. <laughs> to his head, to his head. There's none. See? <laughs> Lord of the Rings? No? There's, it's not there. Okay. Okay, so, yes, of course. And that's why we do a book study for us to understand. So that you don't just skip uh, one book to another. And when you do a book study corporately, Gets, uh, you get a deeper handle of the word, you understand it, and then we get to apply what the word says in our lives. Right? So, okay, so, and of course, uh, we are wrapping up this Faithful God uh, series. On, and after this Sunday, we're going to do five more, I think five more weeks, and then we start with a new series. Homo, you are loving the Samson. It's like Samson is in its own, has its own learning. It's like what Carl mentioned. There's so many things that the perspective but when you were praying earlier, here I just remember <laughs> all right so of course uh, judges are uh, Samson is a judge who is a military deliverer and uh, a prophet and of course we see the book of judges with so much I say this cycle of sin 400 years of just really 
they, they would come into repentance, they would rebel, they would be in bondage again, they would be, this cycle of sin, endless. But we see the unfaithfulness of the people of Israel, and at the same time, we highlight God's faithfulness in the, people, in the lives of those people, right? Pretty much like our lives, right? Would you agree? Yes, okay, so today, uh, for the past four Sundays, we've been looking at Judges 13 to 16, and now we, we're going to look at the life of Samson and as a reverence to God's Word. I request everybody, please rise up as we study, as we look at the text for this afternoon. Can you please click? I don't have my paper. Or... Alright, verse... 20 to 31. Then Samson called to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, please remember me and please strengthen me only this once. O oh God, that I may be avenged on the Philistines for my two eyes. Verse 29. And Samson grasped the two little pillars on which the house rested, and he leaned his weight against it, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other. Verse 30. And Samson said, let me die with this, with the Philistines. Then he bowed with all his strength, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people who were in it. So the dead whom he killed at his death were more than those whom he had killed during his life. Verse 31, this is the last verse. Then his brothers and all his family came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and his stall, the tomb of Manoah, his father. He had judged Israel 20 years. Join me in a word of prayer. Father, thank you, God, for this happening. Thank you for bringing us here safely. Uh, thank you for bringing us here as a spiritual family. Lord, I pray that we study, as we study your words, the life of Samson, as we uh, see the end of his, the, the story of Samson, that we would understand it and see how we would apply the message in our lives. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we now go ahead and take this. All right, so uh, I need somebody to just take that, because this one doesn't. All right. Okay, so what's the text that we just read, right? So of course, chapter, like what I mentioned, chapter 13 to 16 is the life of Samson, and we see here, uh, it's just the cycle. Third, chapter 13 to 16, which is throughout the life of Samson, we see the grace of God. We see the hand of God in, in, the, in that chapter. So remember, before birth, he was uh, an angel of the Lord appeared upon the mother of, uh, of Samson. From the time he was born, he was born to be a Nazarite. And so God's people, and even in, when he was born, even in Samson's disobedience, we see God still saved him from the hands of the lion. Remember that? From the hands of the lion, he, and the lion appeared before him instead of him running away. The Spirit of the Lord rushed in the uh, body in the life of uh, Samson and he, will, he tore, right, the lion, all right? So he ended the force, fast forward, he killed 30, uh, he lost a bet and he was supposed to, uh, there's a riddle and then the riddle was, uh, the riddle uh, was known and then he had lost a bet and now he turned, turned out, he killed 30 men and of course, fast forward, there he killed 1,000 Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey. What, kind, what a powerful jawbone donkey was that. But he was a Nazarite. He's not supposed to touch it, but the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon Samson and he killed them. Uh, 1,000 Philistines. Truly, God was had, God's hand was upon him because Samson was supposed to be the judge and to rescue the people of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. But of course, uh, when after killing 1,000, who only would agree if you keep you how can you do pelat pelat peloton or just, just zumba? Come on, you do that zumba. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> don't raise your hand. <laughs> I know you don't No, no. Of course, you get tired, right? So, so after when you exercise, uh, you, you get tired without drinking water. At at one point in uh, in the story, he was thirty thir thirsty, not thirty. He, he got thirsty, and then God saved him again. I'm just saying paraphrasing all the things that was that's been happening in Samson's life. Because despite of Samson's unfaithfulness, God remained faithful throughout his life. 
Isn't that amazing? But that doesn't give him the excuse to keep on committing sin. Right? So he is really a child of promise. He is really this, this flamboyant, so prideful type of person. But at, at the end, God would still rescue him. He went to Timna. He's not supposed to go to Timna. He went to Gaza. I don't know why he went there, but he went there, right? He's not supposed to be there. And of course, as we look at the context, I'm referring to the, I'm sharing this because of uh, what, ha what the text that we just read, as we look at verse 21, Judges 16, 21, it says here, it's not in the text, and the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, brought him down to Gaza, and brought him with bronze shackles. Now after all of those, yeah, he was defeated, he was now in prison, and he was grinding in the middle of the prison, and even in the most difficult moment of Samson's life, the author writes here, there's a sign, there's a glimmer of hope, right, in Samson's life. Remember, he had this long hair, now he had, he lost all his hair, but he was in prison, right? You know, it, who only would agree that it takes a while to grow your hair? Yeah. Well, you don't have to smile. <laughs> I've been trying. <laughs> Persistent. So, but, so Samson was in prison, as we see here in verse 22. And at least somebody clicked that. And this glimmer of hope, but the hair of his head began to grow again. I want to say this first. His, the source of his strength is not his hair. It's God. Right? Okay? So, so yeah, grow again after it had been shaved, as uh, Seth would hand something to me. Wow. Okay, so... <laughs> I don't know how I look. Don't go to party city. So I look different, I look weird. This only took me five seconds to wear this. But this, what happened here, he was there. I'm gonna remove it now. Ah, ah, it's gone. All right, so his hair, it took, what I'm trying to point out here is that Samson was there for the long, for a long period of time. You know, um, because of his pride, because of his ego, his hair has been cut. And of course, as we move on with the story, at verse 23, you can see here, the Philistines have now gathered together in celebration of their victory. In verse 23, it says here, Now the lords of the Philistines gathered to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their God, and to rejoice. And they said, Our God has given Samson, our enemy, into our hand. Verse 24, And when the people saw him, they praised their God. For they said, Our God has given our enemy into our hand the ravager of our country who has killed many of us. So what's happening here in this text, right? Of course, the Philistines gathered together not just for a physical gathering, it's not just for a feast. This is a physical gathering, but at the same time, this is a spiritual gathering as well. Because they are so persistent in defeating Samson, not just Samson, but also the God of Samson. Right? Now they're celebrating because their God, their small God, G-O-D, God, they feel like, oh, our God is better. Now they're celebrating. So that's why they're celebrating here. And of course, the father, Dagon is the father of Baal, um, the weather deity. Two things are they doing. They're sac they offer sacrifice. They rejoice. They celebrate victory. And of course, remember in Judges 15 when Samson did this ridiculous thing, this animal cruelty that he did, like torch. He put torch in the two 150 foxes and then... Of course, there you go, and then let go of the crops were, were, uh, were torch and fire. And of course, this is like, okay, what, this is what Samson did? This is what's going to happen now. But they're celebrating because Dagon said that Dagon is a, Dagon, is a god of Davy, of uh, a lord of harvest, is what they're saying. Of course, he, this is Samson in the eyes of uh, the Philistines. He's their enemy, the devastator of their land, the slayer to many of them. Now, it seems in verse, good thing this in verse 24, this is not the end of the story, isn't it? There's more to what's, uh, what's going to come. Because this is not just a battle between the Philistines and Samson. This is a battle between the God of Israel and the God of the Philistines. 
As we move on to our study, we can see how God will move in the life of Samson and how God will fulfill His promise to the people of Israel. Remember, God's calling, God is supposed to save the people of Israel. For 40 years, they've been, uh, the people of Israel have been in the hands of the Philistines, and now this is what's going to happen. Now, I'd like to share with you four things about God's character right, into this story. Four things we can learn about God in this story. Number one, God allows us to suffer the consequences of our wrong and foolish decisions. It's kind of meant long, but God allows us to suffer the consequences of our wrong and foolish decisions. Where did we get that? In verse 25, it says here, And when their hearts were merry, they've been drinking a lot, they're partying, they now decide to call Samson their lords, their Philistines, other uh, so many people. They call Samson that he may what? Entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison and he entertained them. Imagine that from the judge that he was. Now he's been, he was in prison and he entertained them. And so they made him stand between the pillars. Now God doesn't want Samson to go through this situation. It's not like, oh, this is God. Will. But at the same time, but Samson, Samson's prideful heart and disobedience led him into this situation. This is, this is not, God doesn't want him to be in the prison. He was called upon to rule, to judge, to be the deliverer, right? So imagine, have you seen one drunk person? Don't, don't. Just think, imagine, imagine. Hmm. Okay, what, what, how does one drunk person act? Oh, don't look at their, the person. <laughs> imagine 3,000 drunk person, merry partying. Imagine like, they would think whatever, right? They would do whatever they think. They think that it's like, okay, what? because they're drunk. They're merry, that's like, their hearts were merry. They're fulfilled, they're satisfied after all this. And now they call upon Samson. Look at the, this is the weight of what's happening there, right? Now, the, the 3,000 people that were mocking Samson, they made a sport out of him, the judge of Israel, right? So it's not like, oh, entertain them. It's like, oh, entertain, like do salamin, salamin, like something, you know that? <laughs> and I don't know, Sabine, this song, I said, oh, entertain Samson, dance, something like that. No, it's not. They're ridiculing him. Sin has consequences, my brothers and sisters. God allows, it's not like if you're in this situation, that doesn't mean that you are getting away with it. At some point, you, if you're committing sin, it has consequences. And this led to the judge, the 13th judge of Israel, Samson, in chains, entertaining the Philistines. Right? So, Samson's tragic situation, I would say this would be his lowest point of his life. Would you agree with me? He's, enter he's entertaining. This is not, uh, that's entertainment. You know, that's, it's not like, okay, that's, uh, that they, we have, they have this dance number. No, 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 there's nothing. He was just there entertaining, ridiculing him, humiliating Samson, blind already. It's like his eyes gouged out. He was blind. Now he, at this point, he was, Long hair, a little bit, right? It's so a long, yeah, longer hair, but he's, he was blind and he was uh, in chains, right? So imagine from uh, this tragic situation, he's now defeated, right? So he was humiliated into the hands. Now the people of Philist the Philistines, they're rejoicing. And he, Samson did it to himself. When he's defeated, I see how long you've been following the Olympics, you no? Know? Not the political aspect, just the sport in itself. I mean, come on. You know when a person uh, would win, they celebrate it. But the person who lost is so in in feeling defeated because of it. And he was, uh, the person would be, I would say, disheartened at some point. I would see the person crying because of the, not because of the, he this defeated, but not just because the person was defeated, but also the fact that, you know, he didn't fulfill the thing that he was supposed to fulfill for his country. This one, Samson is different. It's not in the Olympics and entertaining there. 
keep put it upon himself. This is, the, this is just, oh, this is the consequences of his actions. Right? So there's no medal to this. There's no, oh, bronze medal. Bronze shackles, yes, they're really. Right? So this is different. So imagine from a judge to a slave, blind slave, grinding grains. This was the, actually, if you, you would research, this is like the lowest point of a slave. You're already a slave, now you're grinding. You're doing things of the lowest of the lowest people. When you're supposed to be doing some, something that God had called you to do. An object of ridicule, humiliation into the hands of the enemies. Why? Because God allows us to suffer the consequences of the wrong and foolish decisions. Right, so, Samson he was so prideful, he was so strong, he was so careless though, and just doing the things that he wanted, what was appropriate in his eyes. Now he doesn't have any eyes. Now he's blinded. Now commanded to entertain the presence of God is not there. Remember, God's presence, now God is absent. It's just him entertaining 3,000 Philistines. Right? As we move in verse 27, we can see here. Can somebody please pick it? Verse 27, Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And on the roof, there were 3,000 people men and women who looked on while Samson entertained. So 3,000, as I, I went ahead, but there's 3,000 lords, 3,000 entertaining them. I don't know what it, I was researching how he entertained them, but it was, of course, not a pleasing sight, right? So, he was suffering the consequences of his poor decision. As Samson entertains the Philistines, we can see the following verses, how God revoked in Samson's lowest situation. You can see, now as I ask this, as you reflect, what are some, just pause right now, as you reflect, what are some wrong and sinful and foolish decisions you have made? Are there some? If you think there are no consequences to your actions, you are wrong. Because this is what the text said, right? Like Samson, like Samson, like Samson, do you have to experience, do you have to go to the lowest point of your life? Do you have to go there? Do you have to hit rock bottom just for you to recognize the stubbornness of your heart? It's not an accident. This is not like, oh, when Samson woke up, oh, I'm on chains. Oh, I'm already in prison. No, he did it on his own. Now he's suffering the consequences of it. Now if you, my brother and sister, are going or do, doing things that aren't, you're not supposed to, could be financial aspect, could be situational, could be marital aspect, it could be different. You, it's between you and God. Stop. Don't wait for that time for you to suffer that consequence. I'm pretty sure you, you're not, you're not going to entertain 3,000 people and you're not, your eyes will be gouged out. But do you have to go to the room? Do you have to hit rock bottom just for you to see what God wants you to see? Second thing we can learn is God hears our peace and remembers His people. God hears our peace and remembers His people. As we look at the following text, verse 28. Then Samson called to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, oh Lord, please remember me. Let me tell you, this is not like a one. He had some time to reflect because he was in prison, not just like for three days. This is not like a one week trip to Orlando and then you get to have. No, he was there. He had time to reflect. But God's presence was not there. Remember in the, when you go to the text or few texts, not texts, few texts back, right? So you see, God's presence is not there. God left it. That's why He is, regardless of His pride, and there, no, nothing. He hears nothing. When, when, Han, when the worship team was uh, leading worship, you feel, you feel the presence of the Lord. Isn't it? Not, uh, isn't it scary? When you are lifting up your hand, 
because of your sin, you don't feel the presence of God anymore. People beside you, they're crying, and you, because of your sin, why is it I'm not? I'm not. There's nothing. Now, here's the good thing, right? God hears. Oh Lord, please remember me. Look at that. Isn't that encouraging? When you go back, oh Lord, please remember me. <laughs> you guys don't know this. Let me just. Oh, you know? Oh. Okay, so. <laughs> this is the only. This is actually the second time in Samson's recorded story where he addressed Lord. When he was thirsty, yeah, he prayed to God. Imagine, he's like around 40 something years old at this time. Samson was hopeless, he was desperate. In the moment of desperation, God, he cried out to God. Samson called upon the name of the Lord. His eyes gouged out, no more, no more eyes, blinded. Lord, please help me. Please help me. Samson would recognize God's sovereignty over his own life through this prayer. Imagine entertaining, Lord, I'm so tired. I cannot entertain these 3,000 people anymore, anymore. <laughs> Help me. I'm so tired. Samson would recognize. I remember me means actually to act upon. Act upon your behalf. That God would restore Samson. Samson's repentance. Samson called upon the Lord, right? So, this is a time to reflect. Samson wasn't just there. Again, as I mentioned, he was there for a good number of years. Throughout Samson's life, he has done things his own way. He has disobeyed the Lord countless times. But at, at, at this point, it seems that the number of times he has committed sin, God would just forget about Samson. But when you come to God, when you come to God with real repentance, with real godly sorrow, not having worldly sorrow, right? He hears our prayers. When you come to God before the Lord, Lord, please remember me. Sincerely, right? God hears our prayers. God hears our prayers. Not please, right? Please. He hears our prayers. You know, sometimes instead of just going through straight to the Lord, this is me, I'm not, this is not me. In coming to Him to remember us, we overcomplicate things. You know, some maybe doing good works instead of just coming straight to God. Sometimes you do more things for God instead of just coming straight to God. You think of how great your sin is. You think that God will not forgive you. Instead of addressing the issue, you go to the other God. You go, you do other things to compensate of your sin. You add some good words. Let me add some good words here instead of me serving just once this month. I, I've served three times. Oh, I will add some victory group attendance in my life. I'll also add washing the dishes. <laughs> I'll add pogi points to my spouse. I'll add pogi points to my mom or my dad. To compensate for the sin that I'm doing. To, I mean, again, that's me. And this not. I'll be a good son. I'll be a good daughter in this household. I'll do but this is like whatever. Sometimes when we overcomplicate things, we think of how big your sin is and not recognizing how great your God is. It's like, oh gosh, I cannot go back to this because I have touched something that, like Samson, touched something that is not supposed to touch, drink something that is not supposed to drink, did lust. This is so prideful, so angry all the time. Now, when we sin, when we come to God, like Samson, who use only a few words and God listen. Lord, please remember me. Remember me. Lord, please remember me. In 
and God listened. Don't complicate things. Instead of doing some other things, go run to God. Lord, remember, your sin is great. Yes. Say this with me. Yes, my sin is great. But God's love is greater. Remember this, this is an every nation so. Yeah, your love. Your love is great. When I'm lost in the darkness, oh, you remain as my life. <laughs> Sorry, no man. Oh yeah, maybe this is where we got open my eyes and see your glorious face. Open my eyes to see your glorious face. What's the next? All I can see, Lord, you're all I see. Your love is your mercy in me. Your love is greater. Your God's love is greater because it's like, yes, my sin is great. But God's love is greater. Yes, God's love is great. Because there's nothing. It's more greater than godly repentance. If you go come to Him with worthy sorrow, worthy repentance, that's nothing. But when you are you sincerely come to God, God's love is you. Then you're saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Stay. I have two more to share. Another thing we can learn is God's strength is available to those who humbly acknowledge their weakness. God's strength is available to those who humbly acknowledge their weakness. In verse 28, it says here, please, of course, he said, please remember me. And he also prayed one more prayer, and please strengthen me. Remember me, and also please strengthen me only once, only once. Oh God, that I may be avenged on the Philistines for my two eyes. Of course, Samson, who's now physically weak, shackled, prayed this humble prayer and applause that God is the one who strengthens him. And God is able to rescue him in times of weakness. Times of weakness. He, he always relied, throughout his life, he relied on his own strength. But in the time of weakness, he cried out to God and he cried, Lord, strengthen me. Strengthen me, God, because I am so tired. I'm so weak. Yes, he was morally weak. Yes, he, but physically weak as well. Now, while Samson's prayer might be actually when he, as I was studying reading this, it's interesting because Samson's prayer is kind of like, okay, Lord, this is a prayer of personal vendetta against his enemies. He's like, oh God, that I may be avenged for those things for my two eyes. Remember, he took, they took out my eye. Now, please avenge me. But of course, he, he sincerely cried that thing, right? So, while Samson's prayer, he still recognized the ultimate source of his strength. And not recognizing it. Because why? Because God is merciful. Because this one, this whole story is not about Samson. This is about God. Your story is not your story. Your story, your life story is about God. How God will move your, into your life. Your story is not your story. Yes, but my eyes are gouged out already. Yes, but I am bound in bondage of this sin. Yes, yes, but God can take you out of that because your story is not yet finished. When we humbly come to God, acknowledge that we have weaknesses, not being prideful. Sometimes when you know that you, you have so many giftings in your life, you rely on your own strength. It's like, oh, I'm so talented. I have so many degrees, third degree burn. <laughs> I have this doctorate, you know, I, you are so, it's like, you know, so I can, when you go to your uh, office, you know, you can close your eyes and you can still work because you know the, how you will perform your work, like the back, of, the back of your hands, you know what to do already, so prideful already. 
and now. But when you recognize your strength comes from the Lord, He will strengthen you more. You will accomplish more. Why? Because there's a purpose. Purposeful. Right? Even in the midst of the most difficult situation, Samson, you know, God, He will give us the grace and power to face the circumstances that we're in. Now, if we have three more texts to share, as we move on to the story, we see that Samson moved in faith. The author didn't mention that the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon Samson like in the previous verses. What happened next? Samson grasped the two middle pillars on which the house rested, and he leaned his weight against them, his right hand on the one, his left hand on the other. In verse 29, and Samson, and verse 30, and Samson said, Let me die. Let me die with the Philistines. Then he bowed with all his strength. And the house fell upon the Lord and all the people who were in it. Now Samson, Samson relied on God's strength. But for him to rely on God's strength, he also recognized his weakness. Which area of your life do you really, really need to rely on God's strength? Are there areas in your life that you need to rely on God's strength? Maybe you're failing because you're relying on your own. You need God's strength. Which area of your life is that? How is it? I keep on failing in this situation. I keep on, I'm not. Even if I think I'm good, I'm still not. Maybe you need to rely on God's strength. Maybe God needs to give you wisdom. You need to come to God. But for that to happen, you need to acknowledge your, that that is your area of weakness. I don't know what it is. It's between you and God. You know, sometimes your personal strength can also be your weakness. You know, say, oh, I'm relational. Now you, I'm a relational person. It's easy for me to, now you need affirmation from people. Your affirmation and security comes from the pure person who's encouraging you. Now, that's an, just an example. The affirmation should only come from God, right? So that's just one of the examples now. So we look at that, right? Point two, and point three, God's strength is available to those who humbly acknowledge their weaknesses. Verse three, uh, God's strength, that's number three. Now, as we land this, point four. Uh, I have four. Normally, I just share three, right? There's a bonus. <laughs> bonus to this message. God is faithful to redeem and restore those who are repentant. God is faithful to redeem. Isn't that encouraging? God will redeem you. It is God who acts, not you. And restore you. It's having his right standing before God. It's like what Samson did. He is now restored to those who are repentant, right? So, so the dead, you can see here, the dead whom he killed at his death were more than he killed at his death, were more than from those whom he had killed during his life. Huh? Huh? He just, fuck. He just, uh, imagine that. It was God's dread, effortless. Why? Because there's a purpose and reason, but God had, but Samson had to repent. God had to recognize this weakness. I mean, Samson had to recognize his weakness, right? Samson's desperation, prayer, and free repentance resulted to redeem Samson, and he was restored. Now the author highlights the result of Samson's act. In one blow, imagine that, in one blow, he killed more people that time during his entire lifetime. I can only kill flies, mosquitoes. Ah, <laughs> oh, mosquitoes, I hate you. I'm sorry, I, I, had to say, I don't know why I said it. So, now, I go, I'm going to go back to this. While Samson sacrificed his life, right? Which is unfortunate. I, I feel like, personally, I feel like this is not how God wanted Samson to go. He was just 40-something years old. He could, done, he could do something more. 
you know, to accomplish God's purposes. But this is how He wanted to go. I don't know. But this is what He did. Sacrifice His life. We can still see God's sovereignty. We see God's sovereignty throughout this life. The hope and the promise for the people of Israel. Samson did it now. God did it. Did it the way God redeemed the people of Israel. We guys should remember uh, Samson fulfilled his mission in the end, right? So as mentioned from the angel of the Lord, remember before he was born, this was mentioned. He shall begin to save Israel from the hands of the Philistines. He accomplished his mission. His permissive will, remember, he did this. He was redeemed. He was restored. He was not remembered for the wrong things he had done. God remembered. He, he actually fulfilled his mission. In 1631, we can see here, he had judged Israel 20 years. He was remembered. That's why the author wrote it there. He was remembered. This is the last text in verse of, about the story of Samson. He had judged Israel 20 years. He didn't, the author didn't write there. And then Samson committed suicide. Long hair, period. God. No. No, it's, that wasn't the story. He was redeemed. He had judged Israel for 20 years. Is there something missing? God did see one part that Samson repented, not Samson's disobedience throughout his life. There's this one portion. It's this, Lord, please help. Lord, please remember me. And he was restored. As he died, he was redeemed. He still recognized as a judge to the people of Israel. And it's amazing that as we fast forward, as I end this last text, in the book of Hebrews, Samson was included, as you guys all know, Samson was included in the Hall of Faith. And what more shall I say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson? That would be encouraging. Quench the power of fire, escape the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness. It was God all alone. God did it for him. God did it. So we end this story in Samson. It's gonna get darker. The, the for the sadly for the people of Israel, right? As we go to the next five chapters, but as we land this this afternoon, we see God's faithfulness in Samson's life. That gives us hope because God is merciful. God's grace is available to us. Samson was redeemed and restored. And he's actually included in the Holy Faith. Join me in the word of prayer. Father, thank you. Thank you, God, for this message. Thank you, Lord, for unexplainable faithfulness, undying faithfulness for your grace, for your love. Sometimes when we look, as we reflect, there's, we see character, the character of Samson, his actions, is very similar to us and how we act. And yet you forgive us. Today, I just want to challenge you. As you're hearing this message, my brothers and sisters, as you're hearing the message, you are saying, Lord, I don't want this anymore. I don't want, Lord, please remember me. Lord, you know the things that I have done. And you're saying, Lord, remember me, God. Do not forget me a sign of humility. As eyes close, heads bow down. As you're saying to God, Lord, remember me now. Would you raise up your hand so I can pray for you? Amen. Amen. God, thank you for my brothers and sisters who are humbly coming before you, Lord. Lord, you know me. You know, their hearts. They're saying, Lord, Lord, please remember me. 
or take me out of this situation. No more of this defeated life. No more, God. Lord, help me. Lord, restore me. And help me to have this right relationship with you, God. Restore me, God. Put down your hands. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters. Thank you for their humility. Lord, I pray that they would, you would restore them. I know, God, that you see this little act right now, not the same. That they see that's so great, that it's unforgivable, but you see, you see Jesus in their life. Lord, thank you, God, for your faithfulness. I also want to pray for one thing. I don't know where you are in your walk right now, but you're feeling you need God's strength. You need to strengthen God to strengthen you in your situation right now. It could be physical, physically you need God's strength. It could be emotionally. I don't know what it is, but you need God's strength. For you to recognize that, you need to recognize your, that that is your area of weakness. If that is you, his eyes closed again, heads bowed down, could you raise up your hand so I can pray for you? Amen. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters. God, I don't know where they are right now. I pray that you would strengthen them. Thank you, God, for recognizing for them as they recognize their weakness. Lord, would you strengthen them? The Holy Spirit, would you empower them with the Spirit of the Lord rush upon them over their situation? Lord, I pray, I pray, Father, that you would strengthen them, restore them. They're physically weak. They're, they need healing. Lord, I pray that you would Heal them, touch their heart, God, out of whatever situation they're on right now. Lord, I pray that you would emotionally, if they might be emotionally weak. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen them, meet them where they are at, Father. Lord, would you redeem, restore, and just rely on you, God. Lord, thank you for your goodness, God. Put down your hand. Lord, thank you for this message. As we land this, this afternoon, Lord, we are so grateful. This series, Faithful God, Lord, we are so encouraged knowing that it's not about us, but it's all because of you. Your faithfulness in our lives, God. Lord, thank you that we can come before you, redeemed, restored, right standing before you, Lord. Lord, thank you. We love you, we praise you. This we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen.